time we lost her again. Yeah. Just first of all, I'd like to say that I'm putting my tea right here on the table for everyone to see. <laughs> so, uh, dear chairman, dear members of the jury, dear members of the proposition, and of course, my dearest public, it really it pleases me to see how fond our opponents are of the late British Empire. And thinking about it, I don't really think that it's a coincidence. <laughs> um, our opponents chose to study at Yale, an old collegiate university, a descendant of the Oxbridge model, in the heart of New England. If some Americans can see Russia from Alaska, then I guess you can pretty much see the British Isles from Connecticut. <laughs> and it seems to me that Yale's namesake, Mr. Yale, was not only a British merchant, but also a governor of the East India Company. So it's only natural that you'd still be under the charm <laughs> of an empire of times gone by. But, however, I'm afraid that I have to bring you back to the present reality. <laughs> you seem to insist that some country must rule the world for the debate to have a sense. Well, no, maybe it doesn't. And maybe we brought you here, Sciences Po brought you here to defend something that doesn't make sense because it was fun to have a beer with you, I don't think. We don't, actually, we don't actually need for this debate to happen that uh, the British Empire still exists. We don't need it to exist. Uh, you also seem to, to talk a lot about the influence of the Commonwealth. Um, interestingly enough, I would like to note that the last speaker said America, the most powerful nation, and then went on to explain that actually the Commonwealth, which isn't really a nation, is still more powerful. don't know how that happens, but... Um, you seem to be giving us a lot of arguments, which, thank you. Um, and so you talk about influence, and I would like to ask you this. The Greek had an enormous influence on, on the world as it is now. Uh, the Romans had an enormous influence. Napoleon. Do any of them still have empires that rule the world today? They had influence. Do they still have empires? I don't think so. Um, let's talk a bit about soft power, which he mentions. And it's of course clear that the British Empire was once an important cultural force in the world. People worldwide admired the strength of the British Empire, the important aspects of its culture. Football, tennis and other sports were played around the world. English became the main language in its many colonies. Protestantism spread across the globe, encouraged by British missionaries. Do you go ahead. Who do you think rules the world and why? I don't think anybody rules the world. So now, of course, the consequences of the past British cultural... Thank you. So, the consequences of past British cultural um, influences are still there to be seen today, but as the empire has disappeared, so has the ability of the British to shape the culture of countries around the world. The British do not rule anymore. Let's start with the English language. And, sure, it's spoken around the world in one form or another. <laughs> which aggregates, um, <laughs> but do, do you think that the British really have any power in changing the language? So some of you might know a website called Urban Dictionary, which looks at New English slang words, and I, I had a look at a few recent entries. One of them was Deja Vu. Um, it means a costume that was already worn at a previous Halloween party. <laughs> An organic stairmaster. A stairmaster is one of those things that you use for, that Americans use for exercise. Sorry. An organic stairmaster is a hill that one runs up for exercise. Never ending. A referendum initiative that's put on the ballot over and over again so that it might people might get bored and finally vote in favour of it to get rid of it. <laughs> Let me make one thing clear. We British have nothing to do with those new words. <laughs> <laughs> On another topic, sports, when was the last time that England won the football, or, I'm sorry, soccer? Uh, when was the last time that they won the World Cup? I think it was in 1966, two years before Swaziland, one of the last African colonies, became independent. When was the last time that a British sub a subject won a major tennis tournament? That was Fred Perry. That was in 1936. <laughs> that was around the time that the parliaments of Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Union of South Africa, the Irish Free State, and Newfoundland 
became free of British control. Now, what about religion? Protestantism was indeed a strong force in the times of the British Empire, those times gone by. Um, do you think that Britain still has the same power in trying to get people to convert to its religion? Well, no, everyone would say that, as you said, the most powerful nation, that is to say, America, now has the upper hand, evangelicals, newborn Christians. Let's, let's bring up another cultural topic. Um, let's bring up British food. <laughs> this is where you can say, you can, you can say shame, right? Shame. Thank you. Great. And, and finally, let me illustrate my point with a few pictures. Does anyone recognize this one? This is Oscar Wilde, right? This is... Darwin. Darwin. What about these people? The Beatles, great. What's the common feature of all those photographs? They're all in black and white. Thank you. <laughs> British... And the British Empire doesn't exist, and Britain doesn't exert enough influence to rule anything. Thank you. I urge you to vote against the proposition.